Well, uh, we have another question here. Uh, question seven. The question says that uh, f of x is equal to two x to the power of two minus x. Okay. Let's say determine f prime of x from the first principle. So, uh, okay, I'm gonna write the question over here, um, like 7.1, we're looking for f prime of x, okay? And then uh, f of x itself is given by 2x squared minus x. So uh, from the first principle, uh, the formula says that uh, the limit, no, no, not the limit, but the, uh, f of x, f prime of x is equal to the limit of uh, f of x plus h minus f of x, okay, all over h, h approaching uh, zero. Now, um, in this situation, what I'm going to do is I'm uh, uh, first going to write um, f of uh, f of x plus h, okay. Now write it like x plus h. So over here, I'm gonna write uh, two x, okay. Um, okay, f f of x plus h simply means that uh, wherever we have uh, x, we're going to substitute by x plus h. So I'm gonna put x plus h here, x plus h here, uh, x plus h here. So I forgot the way power of two there. Now uh, we're going to expand this, okay? Uh, I am going to write here like two open brackets, x plus h, close brackets, open another bracket, x plus h here, and then minus uh, x plus h. <laughs> okay, so uh, let's first expand this. So we're going to do like uh, this x times x, x times h, h times x, h times h. So uh, this will be like um, f of uh, x plus h will be then uh, 2 open bracket x plus h actually. Uh, I think I will need some space. Let me write it over here. So this might be like um, f of x plus h will be equal to uh, 2 open bracket x squared plus xh plus xh plus h squared, okay, minus x minus h. So this will make what? 2x squared plus, uh, we can combine these two terms because they are like terms. So x plus h plus x plus h makes uh, 2x plus h, and that will make a full xh plus uh, 2h squared minus x minus h. Now, uh, like terms, let's combine like terms. Terms with uh, x squared, we only have one, two x squared. And terms with, um, okay, we have like plus uh, four xh, and then plus two h squared minus x minus h. So they are not like terms, I thought they were. Now that was f of x plus h. And then uh, f of x then is just, uh, uh, 2x squared minus uh, x, okay, minus x. I prefer to write them uh, in order, okay? So now we can do, this This was f of uh, x plus h. Now I want to, we have x plus, f of x plus h is here and then minus f of x, f of x is also there. So we can do, we can minus the two functions. So if I do like, I minus the two functions like that, okay, you see that uh, 2x squared with minus 2x squared will cancel out, okay? So will uh, negative x minus mm, negative x, this also cancels out because minus x minus minus will make minus x plus x and that's zero. Then uh, combining the two functions, we will have, this will be equal to uh, 4xh, plus two uh, uh, h squared minus h. That's uh, f of x plus h. Therefore, uh, this is, I prefer to write it here like that, f of x plus h minus f of x equal to uh, four x h plus two h squared minus h. Now we have the numerator here of this fraction. Now we can divide it by h, okay? If I move, 
I would like this. Um, if I move it here like that. Excuse me. Um, I can write over here. Um, the limit h approaching zero. No, excuse me. I can write. I can write like f of x plus h uh, minus f of x. Okay, this is equal to uh, four x h plus two h squared minus h. Okay, so if we divide here by by h, divided also by h. Okay, this will be then we can take h as a common factor because you notice that uh, each term here as h. Okay, so we can take h as a common factor. So if I take h as a common factor. Um, there will be in the brackets, in the parentheses, there will be 4x plus 2h minus 1, okay, all over h. So um, we can simplify h and h there, and then uh, we will be left with uh, 4x plus 2h minus 1. Now, if I put the limit both sides of the equal, equal, equality, the limit h approaching zero of uh, of what f of x plus h minus f of x over h this the limits are put it there also the limit h approaching zero of um, four x plus two h minus one now, if uh, this simply means uh, we're going to substitute the value of zero for h, okay, wherever we see h, and then this will become then four uh, x, okay, plus two times uh, zero, and then the uh, minus one, and then this will make what four uh, x minus one. That's the first derivative or the, de the derivative from the first principle. So we have this. Okay, that was 7.1. Now question, question 7.2. Um, let's move this one here. 7.2. Um, um, 7.2.1 says uh, the derivative of uh, uh, for this function with, uh, with respect to x, when you see this is like this is simply uh, what is in the bracket the function, and then we differentiate this with respect to x. So this notation, that notation, or f prime notation, they all the same. They all mean the same thing. Okay. Um, so let's do seven point two point one. I'll do it over here. Sorry. Seven point two point one. Uh, we have um, uh, we have given dx like that in the square bracket and an open bracket x plus one close bracket open bracket three x minus seven. That's what was given. Now uh, we're looking for the derivative. Now a situation like this before we differentiate the function, we're going to we're going to uh, expand it. Okay, so this will be like. Um, on the right here, uh, okay, the function itself f of x is, um, what is in the brackets, what, what is in the square bracket here, x, min, x plus one, and then three x minus seven. Now we're going to times this like x times that, and that times that, that times that, that times that, and then this will be equal to three uh, x squared minus seven x plus three x minus seven. And that makes what three x squared minus four x minus seven. Now uh, to work out now the derivative with respect to x, okay, of this, uh, 
uh, this will be then remember the law of differentiation that says uh, a x to the power of n derivative this is the same as uh, n times a times x to the power of n minus one now uh, to, to, to find the derivative we're going to say uh, we're going to do um, 3x squared derivative minus we're going to differentiate each term of this uh, function okay so this will be like uh, 2 times 3 times x to the power of 2 minus 1 minus okay here the exponent the power is 1 so it will be like 1 times 4 times x to the power of 1 minus 1 and the derivative of any constant is just 0 okay the derivative of a constant is always 0 no matter how small, how big it can be. And then uh, this will be equal to 6x, 2 minus 1 is just 1, and then it makes minus 4x to the power of 0. So this makes like the derivative here will be equal to uh, 6x to the power of 1, just 1, it's just 6x, 6x to the power of 1, just 6x, and then here to the power of 0 is just uh, 4, okay, because uh, x to the power of 0 is 1, and then 4 times 1 is 4. So this would be the solution. Okay, and now um, the other, <coughs> excuse me, um, uh, the, the other question is 7.2.2. The question says uh, dy over dx if y equal to uh, square root of x cubed minus 5 over x plus a half pi. Now, we can move uh, this way. Um, um, write my question here. Um, 7.2.2. We, we, we're looking for dy, dx. And then uh, if y is given by um, square root of x cubed minus, uh, <coughs> sorry, 5 over x plus uh, a half pi. Now, uh, if the function is expressed like y equal to, the derivative is usually written dy dx. This is what they ask us to find dy dx. dy dx simply means uh, differentiate the derivative of y. Okay, so um, before even I start to work out dy dx, I would prefer to transform my uh, uh, my functions. Okay, my functions like y equal to cube root of I mean square root of x cubed. I prefer to write it in terms of its um, uh, in uh, in its exponential form. So this will be like x to the power of three over two. Why am I saying that? Because the law of exponents says uh, I'm gonna write it here. Uh, the nth root of a to the power of m is equal to a to the power of m over n. So uh, over here, I can write it like this, minus 5, and then another, so um, another formula for 5 over x, okay, you know, uh, one over, the other law of exponents is uh, uh, 1 over a to the m, this can be written as a to the negative m, okay? So uh, 5 over x is like 5 times 1 over 1 over x. So this can be written as um, uh, x to the power of negative 1 plus a half pi. So uh, dy dx will be uh, the derivative. We're going to apply this formula. Uh, for the derivative, and then uh, um, this will be then uh, 3 over 2 times x uh, times x to the power of 3 over 2 minus 1, and then minus, and then there's a negative 1 there, okay, uh, 5 uh, times x to the negative 1 minus 1. Now, uh, don't let the pi here intimidate you. Pi is a constant, it's a number, it's a scalar, okay? It's not a variable. So the derivative of this this one, this part here, is just going to be zero, okay? Because it's a constant. A half pi makes a constant. So this is going to be just plus uh, zero, okay? So uh, this will be then, excuse me, 
uh, 3 over 2 times x to the power of uh, a half plus 5 times x to the power of negative 2. Then this will be uh, 3 over 2 x to the power of a half. Okay, this can be written as uh, uh, x to the power of a half. So if you apply the same law of exponents here, we can write it. Remember, I said those laws can be applied from left to right as well as from right to left. So I can write here, instead of me writing x to the power of a half, I can write square root of x. And then plus over here, I can just write 5 over x to the power of 2. So this is dy over dx. Um, that was question, uh, all for question seven. Thank you.